welcome back to Rich Summers Art. A lot of interest in these moon paintings recently, maybe because of the blood moon the other night, I don't know. But got a lot of reaction on this one. It's just on a nine by 12 canvas panel. And uh, it got so much favorable reaction that we are going to recreate something like this. Won't be exactly the same, but it'll give you an idea how to do it. Big thanks to Brandon Lane for the yada 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 t-shirt. So let's stop yada 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 and get going. What I did first was prep the board, a little midnight black, some blue, some purples, just kind of get that covered up. And then I did a quick sketch, kind of like what I had here with a pastel pencil. Got the full moon and I just used like a, actually a roll of masking tape and traced around it to get my moon nice and round. Sketched in the mountains and the water line. So we're ready to go, let's get painting. So let's get going with our color palette really a simple painting so you don't need a ton of colors to do this painting got some titanium white cad yellow light some yellow ochre some cad orange cad red burnt sienna ultramarine blue dioxazine purple and just a little bit of midnight black and we should be able to do this whole painting just using those colors right there so I'm gonna start out with a number two synthetic bristle brush and grab some burnt sienna and some cat orange and start laying in the base color of the moon, kind of a nice rich cinnamon color, putting a fair amount of paint down because I want that rich color to be the base color for our moon. And using that same color, we can start painting in the mountains. But I'm gonna switch to a number four bristle brush and just using earth tones going to block in the hills all the way down to the water line on this front range I can already tell that I really don't like the ridge line or the horizon line on the other range so I'm gonna change that grab some yellow ochre and some cad orange to start laying that plane in adding some purple and work our way down to the water line Going to darken up the ridge line on the hills closest to us, help push the other hills farther back into the painting. And then with a number six bristle brush, I grab some purple, ultramarine blue, and a touch of black to lay in the water. Added a little burnt sienna to paint in the land in the foreground. Okay, got the canvas covered. Let's wipe out our lines and sketch marks. See if we can't start bringing this painting to life. Gonna grab a small bristle brush, some titanium white and some yellow ochre and using horizontal strokes with a really light touch, just lay in that first layer of the reflection of the moon across the water. And using the same color, same brush, start highlighting the horizon line on our mountains. We don't wanna cover up everything in the background because we want the perception of shadows and contour and textures of the land. And using the same brush and the edge of the brush with an extremely light touch. I am barely touching the canvas right there. Just letting the tooth of the canvas on the panel pull the paint from the brush. I'm gonna create the glow from the moon in the sky. And once we brighten up that moon, you're gonna see what a difference just that effect right there actually makes with the painting. Back down, bringing that horizon line a little brighter, laying more of the mountain range in and the contours of the land. A lot of that's gonna get covered up with some big trees, but you gotta lay it in there. Gonna brighten up the reflection on the water again. Again, acrylics dry darker, and you just have to keep adding layers till you get the value you want. All right, let's switch brushes and grab a number two filbert brush and using some cad yellow, some titanium white, and a little yellow ochre, start making us a moon. Just like the land, you don't want to cover everything up. You want to create that perception of craters and hills and the sea of tranquility and 
Somewhere Neil Armstrong's footprint is in there, I think. Cad orange, cad red. Help create a 3D effect of the moon. Gonna gray that color down a little bit with some blue. Just a touch of blue and a little bit of purple. Kind of creates that grayish brown color. And we'll go back in with titanium white and cad yellow and a little yellow ochre. Just working our way around the moon, not covering everything up. Want to make it look like there are craters and all kinds of textures and high spots and low spots. Using a fine tip detail brush, a little titanium white and a little blue, just tapping the painting around just to put some stars up there in the sky. Back to the moon with some titanium white and some cad yellow. We are gonna to continue to highlight this moon and work on this moon throughout the painting until we get the values and the brightness where we want them. getting there with the moon. Okay, we're gonna grab a little bigger bristle brush and using some purple, some ultramarine blue, and a little black, lay in the tree line. A lot of that's probably gonna get covered up, but just in case it shows through, you gotta have it in there. And using that same color, we're going to pull it down into the water to give the indication of some reflection and shadows there. And I'm gonna grab my other brush that's got that lighter color on it and just tap in a few more lines of reflection. Okay, back up to the moon. Smaller brush, brighter colors, titanium white, cad yellow. I keep working on that upper right hand side of the moon, the upper quadrant there. You can kind of see now how the glow in the sky is starting to really complement the moon. I'm gonna grab a bigger synthetic edged bristle brush, kind of a chisel end on it, and start laying in a pine tree here. Kind of creates our eye stopper on the right hand side of the painting. Using kind of a grayed down yellow ochre color, start creating the clouds up there in the sky. Because the moon is always going to be behind those clouds, and the clouds are always going to be behind the trees in your foreground. Brighten those up a little bit. Some yellow ochre, a little titanium white, just a touch of blue. Okay, creates a grayish color. There we go. That looks better. Reflect some of that down in the water. Highlight the hills a little bit. And okay, now, now we can lay in the bigger trees along the foreground a little closer to us I like using a small filbert brush when I do pine trees like this with a light touch it just enables me works for me anyway to give the indication of pine needles and branches and pull that reflection down into the water think about composition here you don't want your trees evenly spaced, you don't want them the same size. Think how nature is and kind of recreate that. Let's go back over here. You want to let some of that background show through. That's what creates that depth and adds some really cool effects to your painting.
All right, I switched to a script liner brush, really fine point detail brush. Make up a really kind of soupy black color and using that fine line, lay in a bunch of trees that have lost their leaves. Maybe it's late in the year, maybe these are dead trees. I don't know, but those branches look pretty cool with the light from the moon coming through from the background. foreground. I'm going to use my T-square and a little gray lay in our water line. I'll brighten up the moon a little bit and keep working on that reflection as it's coming through the trees. And Brightening up our water line and brightening up the reflections in the foreground. So it looks like that moon is reflecting across that water. At this point, it's just a matter of getting the values where you want them by adding more and more layers as they dry. More color in the foreground. Small horizontal strokes. Back to our bristle brush with that same color we used in the pine trees. Some weeds and grasses and stuff growing up along the shoreline right here. I'm gonna grab that script liner brush again, same color and start laying in detailed weeds, grasses, marsh grasses. Gonna put kind of a highlight, that silver lining, if you will, around the edge of the clouds that would be lit up by the moon. You're bringing that to life a little bit. Same color in the script liner brush. Let's go in and put some lighter grasses in, maybe catching the moonlight. It's not all going to be real dark down in there. You don't need a lot of it, but just to indicate that there is something there that you can see. You've got to put the dark in to show the light. Let's add a dead tree right here, using that gray color. You want it to dominate the star of the painting is that moon. Oh, and let's put an owl in the tree. Let's put a signature on this one and call it done. Hey, hope you enjoyed watching this full moon painting come to life. Please hit our subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and we'll see you soon with Rich Summer's art. Keep on painting, and thanks for watching.